Good morning everyone, I'm TJ and today I want to show you how you can set up and run the model from section 3.8 in Pavel Gonshora's book Engineering Analysis with NX Advanced Simulation. Uh, the example is a load frame that comprises solid elements, 2D elements, 1D and 0D elements. And in a previous video I've shown you how you can model and mesh this load frame. Uh, in this video I will show you how you can use simulation objects to glue and set up contact between edges and surfaces. NX has uh, a Lagrange multiplier or augmented Lagrange multiplier formulation that uh, enable the users to actually define contact between all kinds of 2 and 3D elements, which is really a nice feature. And then I will show you how you can apply loads using local coordinate systems and also how you can apply gravity loads. Then I will set up uh, the contact simulation and show you how you can monitor the um, nonlinear analysis because it's a nonlinear analysis due to the contacts. And then I will show you how you can do some simple post processing. So stay tuned. Then I want to create the simulation file. So I click on the FEM file and I create new simulation. Accept the default choice. Okay. And SOL 101 is okay. That's the linear analysis. I keep that one. So now I want to add uh, simulation objects that uh, connect the rest of the finite element models. Because as I earlier mentioned, uh, the solids, the solid meshes and the shell meshes are not connected. First I want to hide the meshes and um, I also want to hide the solid geometry of the frame because I'm using the mid surfaces. So I pre-select polygon body, select these two and I hide them. Then I'm ready to start the gluing and I go to simulation object type and I select surface to surface gluing. And then I want to automatically create face, face pairs I choose this one and the bottom surface of the bracket and the same on the other side. There we are. But I have to change the distance tolerance because uh, there is a gap between the mid surface and the bottom of the brackets. And I choose a surface tolerance or distance tolerance of 10 millimeters and a search distance of 10 millimeters. And then uh, the system has detected two phase pairs. So there we are. The next thing I want to glue is the brackets to the mid surface. And um, then I will use simulation object type edge to surface gluing. So let's first select the edge region and I go to this up selection and I choose the edges at the end of the mid surface. Okay and then I have to choose the surface region and I take the bottom surface of this bracket. Okay, accept the choice. There we are. And then I do the same on the other side. Edge to surface gluing. I choose the edges. There. And then I go to the target region and I'll select the bottom surface of the bracket again. So there um, I have glued the frame to the solid brackets. Then I want to define contact and I want to select all cylindrical faces 
where I want to have sliding contact and in addition a few others. Uh, what I can do now is to select simulation object type surface to surface contact. I know I can simply select the whole model by using face pairs and I can select all these. And what happens now is that NX will only select those faces which are in contact and where I haven't defined any glue conditions. Uh, I can choose a distance tolerance of let's say 3 millimeters because I'm not sure if all surfaces are completely aligned. I press OK and then I see I have 14 face pairs. Um, those are probably two face pairs on each side here, that means four face pairs, and six here, that means ten, and in addition I hopefully have selected contact between the flanges here, so that the green part and the brown part are not allowed to, to slide in the global X direction. So let's see what we got. As usual, uh, the symbols are far too large, so I change the uh, display settings and press apply, perhaps even smaller. Okay. And now I can see I've got contact definitions in this region. It's not specified in Goncharov's textbook, um, but uh, there are two surfaces that need to have some kind of friction in order to avoid a singularity. And if we switch to static wireframe, I can show you those surfaces. If we go to polygon body, this one. This is a cylindrical part which is uh, able to slide um, in global x direction. And that one need to be constrained. And uh, if I change the properties of contact 11 or 5, start with 5, I can specify a friction coefficient of 0 0.5 in order to avoid it to slide and hence reduce or eliminate the singularity. I do the same with contact 11, which is the same surface on the other side. There it is. And it also has a friction, static friction of 0 0.5. Then I need some constraints. So I go to constraint type, use fix constraint, and I fix this end, this end, that end, and this one. And I press OK. Then I removed the singularities from my model. The last thing I have to do is to apply loads. So I go to load type and the first I'll add is the gravity. And the acceleration is 9810 millimeters per second power of two. And then I have to specify the gravity vector. And I can choose to do it by selecting two points. I, cho I choose that as a start point and that one as the end point. And that gives me a gravity direction along the edge there. And then I press apply. That's the symbol that gives me the acceleration, the gravity vector. Uh, the next thing I want to do is to prepare a load in the front of the frame. Uh, in order to do so, I need to define a coordinate system. And I use offset coordinate system, and then I use uh, an X value of 1920 millimeters, uh, a Y value of 6394, 6394 point five four five those values are given in the textbook and I use an X angle of minus eighty two and ten and then you see the 
coordinate system here in the front in the front frame and I press OK then I switch to the line view once I've created the local coordinate system I'm ready to apply the concentrated force and I want to use the type components and I use the point I constructed as the reference point then I specify a Cartesian coordinate system here and I want to use my offset coordinate system which I've created. You can also notice that you can do it uh, simultaneously here. You have this coordinate system dialog which enables you to do it in a one, one single operation. Now I want to select the coordinate system which I've already uh, modeled and I'm not sure why but I have to click twice on this uh, local coordinate system to actually select it as the reference. Now you can see the coordinate system directions are displayed. And I want to apply zero newtons in x direction. I think it was 12,000 in y and it's minus 11,000 in z direction. And I press apply. Then my model is ready to run, but I want to do some changes to my simulation setup. So I click on solution one and I use the edit button. And then on output requests, I want to add one request. I want to plot the contact results. And the reason is that even though SOL 101 is a linear solver, I have applied contacts and I think those contacts formulations are based on Lagrange or augmented Lagrange and that uh, gives me a nonlinear analysis because of the contact effects and therefore I want to plot contact stresses. Then I've completed my solver setup. I want to look the model in shaded view. I switch off the polygon geometry and I switch on the elements because after the solution I want to display stressed results. Then I right click on my solution, solve and I press OK. And since this is uh, a nonlinear analysis it will take some time and NX will plot iterations and tolerances and you can watch this. But this uh, simulation will take a few minutes, so let's have a look when it's completed. After four minutes, uh, the simulation has completed. And um, uh, I think it took like 15 uh, iterations to complete the simulation. And no errors or warnings were identified, so I just go to the post-processing task. I double-click on structural. And I go to my solution and I can uh, check the stresses for Mises stresses. Um, you should note that this is a nonlinear analysis and then it's quite critical to set the deformation scale. So the first thing I'll do is to change it to absolute and the scale to 1. Okay. And here we see the maximum stresses. We can change the to average and then we can set the legend to specified let's set it to 300 megapascal there it is and you can animate it uh, then I want to check if the contact uh, definitions have worked as expected. So we can go to contact force or contact pressure and we plot the sc scalar values. And here you see that they work, although the stress contours are not very nice. I can set um, the legend to 100. Yeah. It looks like the contacts are included well. 
although they look a bit scattered. So uh, that uh, completes the simulation of the load frame from Pavel Goncharov's book. I think it's shown in example 3.8, the meshing, and the solution is shown in chapter 4.5. Thanks for watching.